Hello people, my name is Lars und Kaspar. I'm from Germany. I'm also a hobby photographer, so I take uh, pictures in lots and this is actually a picture from it's an observing picture from one of the alternate reality labs we had in civic education. These uh, guys here right in the middle are from the lab and what... Uh, oh, I have that pointer. What is quite... doesn't work. So what is quite interesting, I think he looks very suspicious, but he hasn't been part of the lab. So, okay, so what is it all about? Um, uh, what is at your lab? So, actually, I can't tell you what Adulab is because there are many people who define it different. But um, I think it becomes Adulab as soon as you uh, as you use Lab as a tool to to teach something to people or to make people aware of something or to transport any kind of skill or whatever you want to uh, get to the people. Then I think it's Adulab. Um, I do it also with children, not only with adults, but today I will talk about adult at your lab. So in German we call that political education. I think the correct term in English is civic education. And the tradition of educa uh, political education in Germany started in the 1950s. It was all about uh, telling the uh, society, how it could happen that we had a fascist regime in uh, Germany, that we had all that World War II stuff, and um, it, it, it's kind of awareness thing. So what, um, but it changed over the years. So we had that from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Yes, and at some point people said, okay, let's do some more on that and teach uh, people about other problems we have in society or get make them aware about stuff so uh, today it's a lot that is done under this and we even have a government uh, yeah I don't know the word in English for that it's uh, a part of the government that gives money for that so it's uh, founded actually yeah and who does stuff like this uh, actually from my point of view, two little people, and uh, from my own point of view, uh, too often people that have a certain political uh, point of view. So, uh, of course, I also have a certain political point of view, but I try to let it out of my games because I, I want make people to to decide and I want make people to think about things and not to get my political point of view. So. What uh, have we actually done with it? Uh, we bought lots of weapons, of course. That's always important. And uh, yeah, more weapons. So x was a game uh, that I made in 2009, 2010. I can't actually remember the year. And it's based on a Finnish game by a guy called Mikko Rautalahti, as far as I remember. I once met him. Um, and uh, the the thing I want to 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 make people aware of is the value of life and how hard is it, it is to decide uh, whether one person's life is more uh, valuable than another person's life, or one person's life is more valuable than another thousand persons or hundred thousand persons' life. Um, we also had as a strain, uh, strong topic in their political violence. We had a, yeah, some kind of terrorist group that uh, came out to be the good guys in the end, but actually they looked like that, so the good guys don't look like that. Uh, so yeah, maybe according to US, US Army, but not to a common sense. And uh, then there also have been, for many uh, of the participants, the question of obey or resist in this game. And there have been really, really interesting, uh, interesting ways for people to, to deal with the situation. And um, yeah, we had, we had actually people that are working for the government, like uh, people that are um, working for... Um, uh, 
Ah. Ah, for the court, like a judge and like a, um, like a lawyer, like a state lawyer and stuff like that. And we also had people that are working in, in offices and they got a lot of out, that, out of this because they were like, okay, it, it, it felt, it, it gave us a new point of view on things. And then uh, the last thing I have to break around that, uh, sorry, but I won a fret with that. That's the German La Prize, and I had to, I had to mention that. Um, this was founded by Bundeszentrale für politische Bildung. That's this part of the government that founds stuff like that. And so the particip participant fee was quite cheap in German standards. Still normal to expensive for Finnish standards, but <laughs> anyhow. Okay, so the next thing is the living debt. Uh, actually, we don't know if we had zombies in there or not, uh, because we didn't decide it by the organizer crew. Um, actually, that was part of the game that we had on uh, we had a uh, mental institute. And if you ever saw pictures or movie pictures from mental institutes in the 1970s and 1980s, there was this medication that's called Haldol. And if you if you use this, you pretty much become a zombie. So you're not eating other people, but you act like a zombie. And we let we were about to let the players decide in the game: is these people zombies or not? That was part of the game, and it also was part of the game that the players themselves got um, into the, this mental uh, health institute and, yeah, felt some institu institutional violence. So they had that institutional violence, high pressure uh, situation. Then they had the decision, is it really or uh, is it reality or is it not? And uh, they had been completely helpless. So in some situations they really have been like that so this is actually a participant and what you can't see is that uh, her hands are bound on her back so situations like that um, it was also founded by Bundeszentrale für Politische Bildung it had even more impact because players liked it a lot more okay we got a bit into the mood how to do it and uh, yes we won the fret again I have to say that it's cool <laughs> Okay, enough with bragging around. So this is uh, Project Prometheus. It's not made by uh, me or the group I'm working in. It's uh, some other people we know who do that. It's uh, actually Waldritter. They do a lot of kids' lab in Germany, but they also do stuff in uh, civic education. And we had uh, the opportunity to be part of their games. They have a very complex story about media uh, manipulation and war and terror and fear as a business. So um, actually in their storyline there is uh, from the beginning they look like the good guys. It's a, it's a company that deals with uh, the security and uh, that have yeah a lot of influence around the world, but in the storyline, the players find out that uh, the actual bomb that is placed here in Frankfurt uh, that they try to to get rid of is not placed by terrorists, but by this company who's up for security. Because if there's a bomb in Frankfurt, everyone wants security, so why not placing one? That's I think from my point of view actually pushing people in a certain direction so I'm not I'm not that much into this but still it's quite interesting that again is one of the observation photos I made uh, that's a contact person in Frankfurt uh, in the uh, main station what was quite funny when we made one of the productions in Frankfurt is that at the point the players found out that there's a bomb uh, near Frankfurt Main Station. They had been in Ma Frankfurt Main Station and right at that moment, by coincident, the whole main, main station was shut down. All trains were cancelled. It was because of, uh, of a demonstration of a group, but we didn't knew or we got aware of that and we used it to the player, players telling them it's because of the bomb. 
And if you are in an alternate reality game and you are in a train station that is fully shut down, so all entrances, the gates go down and stuff like that, and like 20 police cars in front of it and stuff like that, that's really scary. <laughs> I can tell you, I never saw white blankets like the faces of these players. Actually, woo. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they had fun with that <laughs> in, in a way. Uh, yeah, more pictures from the Uxurge. Uh, so um, this is a comparable slide. So why is it better than other techniques you use in in a, that are similar to the technique we use, or to the to the to the. Yeah, it's more like a sum up of techniques. So there's psychodrama. Do you know what? Uh, does anyone don't know what psychodrama is? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I I, th I think I won't I won't do a lot talk about what each thing is, but psychodrama is a way of. Um, in in a uh, in a group, you can act out problems so that the group can get aware of it, or that you can find out about what happens to you or happened in the specific situation. So um, it's more like a therapy from from a rough point of view. Um, then we have simulation game um, that is um, often used in schools or for uh, students. Then we have improvisational theatre, you should know that, like uh, putting three people on stage and say to them, okay, you are uh, three neighbours and you're arguing about if whether you can have snakes in your garden or not. Go act. <laughs> and um, theatre of the oppressed, this is uh, actually um, a bit like psych psychodrama to me, but it's uh, actually um, more group orientated, so it's more that the the group will learn something, but the individual. And then you have at last cheap form. I don't say anything about that because you all will know better what cheap form is than I do. And uh, yeah, so let's compare them. From my point of view, actually, from my point of view, if you don't think so, it's totally okay. Uh, simulation, uh, simulation games are more uh, strate strategic and te tactical decisions and you usually have no character and if you have a character it's not very uh, um, very hmm, deep character, let's, let's call it deep. Ah, okay. Uh, Theatre of the Oppressed, uh, that's pretty close to what we do with uh, Edulab but um, actually I have taken part, I know people who ta took part, and as far as I understood, uh, you are not fully, fully immersed in the role, and it's more like intellectual uh, learning, but not from your feelings and stuff. And uh, yeah, you have, you have an audience, so even though so the audience can participate or can go into the play, it's still there, it's still an audience. Okay, so psychodrama. Um, we haven't had that. Uh, it's very emotional, um, but um, actually, uh, it's not a character. It's your person that you are uh, acting out there. So we have that improvisational theater. Um, there's some random Finnish guy in there. Don't know who it is. Oh, a random Danish guy. Ah. Um, so you actually have no char uh, character like we we uh, uh, we um, see it in a lab, and uh, you actually have no plot, <laughs> uh, and the focus on, is on acting and and having fun, mainly. So we have that. Yeah, cheap form. For me, it's no clear borderline between cheap form and lab. I know that all the Nordic lapers are, no, cheap form is not lab, and all the cheap form guys are, no, that's not lab. Um, but um, actually, in German lab, we use lots of lots of methods that is used in cheap form for like 15 years in lab. So for us in Germany, there's no difference between, no, no real difference between cheap form and lab. So, uh, is this all new or is it not? I think it's absolutely not new uh, 
actually what we did is that we found methods from from different different uh, spots, took them together, assembled them in a new way and use it. Maybe other people did it like that also, but didn't call it Edulab or whatever. But I think uh, the, the only new thing about is that we have a focus on it and that we, we go out and speak about it. So, um, the things we have in, in Edulab is, uh, for me, uh, yeah, that's, let's call it methods or let's call it, um, yeah, let's call it methods. That's fair enough. So, um, first thing is multi-dimensional -dim characters. So, actually, if I have uh, a game and I have in that game, you are the captain and you are uh, uh, one of the guys who's working on the ship, so if, if I would get you as a captain and you as someone who's working on a ship, you have a rough idea of the role, what to do in a, in, in a game. If I say uh, the ship is in trouble, uh, you would start shouting at uh, her and she should do something. So, yeah, but we have roughly an idea. But what we do with, uh, what we think about multidimensional characters that we put in some, they have goals, they have desires, they have ideas, they have wishes, they have dark spots, all that. And all that, of course, affects decisions that are made. Even so, it shouldn't, but it affects. And uh, that's what happened to us every day. If we are going somewhere and some people on the street are, um, are bullying someone else, we are all agree that the first thing one should do is go there and say stop doing that stop the fuck but we we don't or actually if we do we are like should we yes yeah okay go over there it's, it's more like there's so much things in our head that hold us back from doing something and that's uh what what is if if i just if I do, uh, do uh, the situation that I told you here, without having a character, you step in and say stop. But if I tell you, you have a character that has fears, that has wishes, that is in a hurry, that wants to go to his girlfriend, whatever, then you, you think, do I, do I not? There's another people then can do it, um, stuff like that. Yeah, costumes. For me, to every character there is a costume because um, the character has his own or her own clothes. If, if I play a role, I need different clothes because if I go into the role, I put away my, my outer sight and get a new one. If I go out of the role, I get away the role's clothes and get mine. That's very important to me. And it's not, not actually that this costume has to be something fancy. It can be something normal that you wear would wear in your life it could be uh, jeans and a t-shirt i have no jeans yeah but uh, jeans and a t-shirt but it should be another jeans and a t-shirt as you so then we have these words immersion and bleed um that's actually not methods that's effects um immersion is to immerse in your character, to have these rare moments when you not really know is this my character or is this me. And with this moments there come plead that some things that affects me as a person will go to the character and vice versa. And this is actually what we use, these effects is what we use in, in these politi political education or civic education because if we make people feel good, bad or whatever about situation or about things they did or not did or whatever, then they start to think about it. That's actually the thing we want. Um, stereotypes. So. From my point of view, this is something that works for every lab or for every role-playing game. Use stereotypes because people know that. So if I, if, if I want to mark a toilet for woman, I give that woman a, uh, a skirt. So even how many women in this room are wearing a skirt? 
So, okay, how many are wearing uh, trousers? Oh, that's more. Okay, <laughs> but usually it would be the other way around, or half, half, or whatever. But actually, if we see a skirt, it's a woman. Yeah. So, what? What's in Scotland? Yeah, but <laughs> but it's like that. So stereotypes are a good thing. And if you want to point something out, break the stereotype at that point. Then people are like, what? And if if you have all over your place stereotypes, but in one place you break it, then people have a have a look on that and will think about it and will go like, well, why did they do that? What happened there? What? You can get people with breaking stereotypes. So uh, feedback photos, that's something we use in our labs. We um, ask people uh, to take photos of actually the person, then the character. Or in this game that was the living dead, we uh, asked the people to make uh, a photo how the character would like to present his or herself to their friends and how the inner self of the character is. And he was a priest and this is obviously not what he want to present to his or her friends. Uh, this is obviously the inner self of the character. So, and after the game we made people have a look on these photos and they were like, wow, cool. And actually from these very short, like five seconds uh, taking the photo, um, people already get a feeling how the character should work. Uh, reflection, that's what we do afterwards. Of course, if you, if you do things like that with people, if you oh, fuck up their minds, uh, you have to talk about this afterwards. We usually do um, uh, it in three steps. The st uh, first step is directly after the game. We just let the people talk. We do not want to really do something they just like blah 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 and I blah 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 and he blah 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 and uh, that's more like lets them express uh, uh, not express uh, uh, is it express the feelings yeah okay and um, then after having a sleep and a shower and food and drink and stuff like that we uh, do some uh, really structured uh, reflection like uh, asking them key questions, putting them into small groups, let them answer them, uh, make some some uh, things like uh, lining them up and telling them, okay, what do you think about that question? Do you agree, go over there? Don't you agree, go over there? Stuff like that. You all did that on some things. So, but that's the second day. And then the last reflection is like two weeks after we uh, ask them again some questions by email and um, ask them to answer the, those questions. Usually they do, not all of they, them do, but usually they do. And it's quite interesting if you compare these three steps to each other. Um, it's hard to document the first step, but the second and the third is quite easy to document. And it's quite interesting what people answer in these three steps and how it affects their way of thinking or their way of how to express what they uh, saw in the lab. So, uh, where do we go from here? Um, actually, I think uh, Agilab is something we could uh, do in, in, in lots of things. So, who would be interested is government or mun municipalities? David, say it for me. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, um, because I, as we, we, we have been founded from the government, but also in, in, in your city there could be something that the city wants you to be aware of. And then, of course, you have schools. Uh, it's a cool thing to work with kids with anger problems or some other social um, strangenesses. Uh, uh, you can do these kind of stuff very good. Uh, then, of course, companies who want to get uh, their um, people aware of something or who want to make team building or stuff like that. And yeah, the last thing uh, is just do it because you want to do it and find sponsors who, who found you, uh, but the government. And uh, yeah, that's what we actually want to do and want to try. And uh, I think that was my presentation. Now I'm here for questions.
I would like to start thinking about uh, it's easy to figure out how to address problems with this kind of tool. But is there any posit positive things that we could actually work with? Actually, <laughs> actually, I haven't thought about that in for adults. But I use uh, LARP as a tool in in education for kids, and there we have many many positive uh, effects. <laughs> Can you give a couple of examples? The, probably some of them will work with adults too, but we can maybe discuss about it. Uh, so, actually, what what I do with the kids is, I just do lab with them, and some things come natural with labs. So, if you want to lab, you need a costume. If you can't buy a costume, you have to make it on your own. If you have kids that are grown up in a in a not that good situated situation or in a, and in a urban environment, they usually have no clue how to do things on their own because they never did that they never have been showed but now they have to deal with that because they need a costume and it's not because I say you need a costume it's because you need a costume when you want to lap you also need a weapon if you are a buffer weapon if you want to lap so you have to make your own and uh, yeah and if you want to lap you might or if you want to fantasy lap in Germany you might want to know how to walk through the woods if you grown up in an urban environment, never did that, whew, you have to learn it. So some things come just pretty natural. So government and municipalities and schools and such, do you like uh, get an idea first and this would be cool to do and then you know contact the right people or is it that you see that the, pe that the government or, or municipalities or schools would like to have something this or that and then you start thinking okay how could I do this? We made both ways. This was a, a thing we made and it was asked. So Weltwärts is from uh, the German government as well. It's for young people who want to, to go abroad to um, uh, third world countries. There's a political correct term for that, but I don't know it in English. So let's keep it like that. And they go and help there. And uh, what what these Weltwärts guys asked us for is they wanted uh, an uh, AIDS awareness or HIV awareness uh, thing. And so we made up um, a small island country in the Caribbean and we made it up as, uh, yeah, we called it Wonderland. And uh, we made up a hospital in there and a waiting room in the hospital where people were waiting for getting tested if they... Uh, are positive or getting their results and that uh, was for example a very short game we made it up for those people it was a game about three hours and um, it got huge response from the people so they had been on a on a workshop week for the whole week they did workshops about many 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 topics and it mostly was like presentations like I do it here what is uh, uh, okay but boring if you do it like a week and uh, so and we came there and made a lab and they were like wow that's cool that's something different yeah so we 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 were able to transport something with that I had these I had these government uh, schools blah 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 and I had on, on the end sponsors so I think I would place it there uh, I can be my own sponsor if I can afford to go there and do something sub, uh, subver, uh, subversive I, I sponsor my own activity so yeah but I, we don't need those categories it was just to to make examples so whatever you want to do with that tool it's cool I'm a teacher and I'd like to do this but how do I start? <laughs> I've done LARPs but never with That's kids. a bit like you know I'm, I'm doing also LARP catering and if people come to me and uh, ask me so um, I want to cook on LARP how do I start? Then I, I'm okay do I have to explain them how to cook water or <laughs> you know what I mean so I, I don't know what your environment is uh, so I've, I've done LARPs, but how to transfer it to, you know, kids and make it so that it actually teaches them something, and not just like by accident. Actually, I think you should use the by accident thing. 
that's what we do. So I'm working with troubled kids. I'm an, I'm an educator and I'm working with troubled kids. Most of them are uh, actually known by the police. And, uh, it's, and I, I started this as an... Uh, I'm missing a word now, I'm sorry. Um, I started it as an activity. So uh, what, what we did is what like, let's do something cool for the kids. And then we found out, oh, there's stuff in there that, is, that comes natural. So, but what you could do if you want to transport a specific thing, you could find a lab setting where this specific thing is transported natural <laughs> not natural anymore but you know what i mean so you can do that that's the thing a teacher or educator we we can manipulate kids we do that so we we of course if someone say you're manipulating manipulating kids we are not no we are don't we know no we don't we do yeah so <laughs> and <laughs> we you you can do that set up a setting that works but what i was asking for is are you working on a school or do you have some spare time with them or something like that because that's very important do you have money for example so uh, yeah can you can you actually do stuff with them or do you have to make up all in in their heads and with old clothes or so it's 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 really like hmm there's a lots of lots of lots of uh, facts we can have a talk on this later or you can send me an email or but yeah, I, I can't, uh, actually, I can't uh, uh, tell you an answer to that yeah, I question I know it's here. a difficult question. I'm yeah. doing master's thesis on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, there's someone over there? I, I just have a look which slides also have been in these every second oh, slide. Uh, I just, uh, I happened um, to read uh, a master's thesis where this uh, there was this uh, teacher uh, who was um, either he was a last day or teaching or primary school teacher or history teacher and he had made a, uh, this LARP tool as his thesis to um, learn these kids uh, history through it um, and you might just like find it by googling or by these uh, universities at this um, these e thesis places where you can find them but one at least one person has done it i don't know if if it's at all like what you are planning to do but that that thing exists yeah and i i think there are more persons who did stuff like that uh in finland and there's that uh I don't know if you have heard about the um, Österskolf in, in Denmark who teaching with lab. I've been there for a week and lived there with the kids. That was actually awesome. And um, there are people doing stuff like that. And there's actually also an EduLab forum in the internet. I think it's sleeping a bit right now, but uh, you could come and awake the dragon. And um, yeah, so if if you want to use this you just have to uh you just have to point at some other people and they will gladly give you their experience so if you want to email me email me but there are also other people around there just ask them any more questions yes up there other other side <laughs> Actually, um, now I have to now I have to go to that Österskolf example in 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 Denmark. They teach actually everything with labs, so there is nothing else than labs. I had them. Um, I have lots of pictures from them, but I don't have them with me. That would be cool now. Uh, for uh, so there had been one example. There had been they have they have a topic for every week. But it's not the topic like teaching physics or math or something. It's a topic like um, one uh, once they had a Manhattan Project, how to build the bomb. And part of the kids had been the um, the physics and chemistries and blah. And part of the kids had been the press. And part of the kids had been the 
uh, army people and the teachers have been the Russians. And <laughs> actually the, the teacher said that would, uh, was really fun because the kids had to hide their homework from the teachers. <laughs> And I, and I think this is a really cool thing to make kids their, uh, do their homework because if you want to hide your homework, you have to do it. <laughs> if it's, you, you know what I mean. So it's <laughs> yeah, and it comes quite natural with the game, game, uh, with the game because uh, of course you have to hide your homework from the Russians. There's uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, give me give me a second. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to say, you said math, so. Part of this was that they had to learn about physics and chemistry and math and stuff like that. And some of the things they had to find out had been on English or on German and they had to translate it. So all these things came in there quite natural. Okay, you. Okay, so I was wondering if you have published anything, any of these online or otherwise? Or if there are like publications of, by other people? <laughs> I'm sorry, no. <laughs> Why not? So we have one, we have actually one publication that's about the one lab, the living dead. I showed you that it's, uh, that's in the uh, German lab book from last year or the year before. There's a documentation from that, but we are, we are actually not very good in document stuff like that. And we, that's the next thing we want to do. So uh, we, we see that problem and that's the next thing we do. But actually, yeah, we are crappy on this. Sorry. <laughs> there's always someone asking this question, and it's, <laughs> yeah, there's no answer. <laughs> but sorry. <laughs> okay, someone else? Yes, please. Yes. I was wondering if you always use a modern setting for these kind of games, or if you. Oh. Yes, uh, I was wondering if uh, you always use a modern setting for these LARPs or if you like make an educational fantasy game or are there benefits and... When I do it with kids I do it with fantasy because that's easy. Yeah, they, they, if, you want to, if you want to get kids into LARP, uh, especially if you have kids like, like I'm working with, with special needs or anger problems, you just have to tell them that they can beat each other up with a buffer war a sword. So <laughs> they are in. <laughs> yeah. And then you have to deal with that like, oh, <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> it, it, works quite, it works works quite fine, but uh, it's pretty easy to get kids into a fantasy setting or a pirate setting, something like that, because that, that works always. Ninjas, pirates, fantasy, all that stuff. All kids love that. And it doesn't anyhow distract them from the, the main point. How do you mean that? I mean if they are so like, oh, we got to hit each other with buffer weapons, that they miss the, like, the educational point. So uh, what I do is I give, hand them out the buffer weapon and they start to hit each other in the head. And that's forbidden in German lab. You are not supposed to hit someone in the head. So as soon as someone is hitting someone else in the head, I go there and say, you're not supposed to do that. If he does it again, I take his sword for like three minutes. Then I give it back to him. Three minutes of all the others having a sword, but you is hell. That's pure <laughs> hell. <laughs> so some of them, to some of them, I have to do it once. Some even see that some other has gotten his sword away and learn from that. Others need like 10 times, but lesson learned. There's, there's actually one part of the educational lab. What's the shortest time setting you'd, uh, you'd recommend for an educational lab? Because usually it takes some time to get into character and, and, uh, and uh, uh, get a meaningful plot going on, but usually time is it's become a pretty scarce resource in, in uh, both in education and in, in people's lives in general. So, uh, do you think, uh, how many hours do you need to have a LARP that might teach something to people? I don't know. So, this was, uh, oh no, the, the setting we had, this Wonderland setting, that was like three hours. Um, for us, it felt too short. Still, the people had fun and 
thought it was was good. We also had replays in the same time span, and it worked pretty fine. But um, I think it should be longer. But I think also that it could be shorter if you have a specific topic. For example, um, the uh, friend of mine and me, we were sitting in a bar at some point, and we were like, okay, we want to design a LARP, and we have to... Need, we need an idea where we start. And so he said, okay, let's design an art where you have a, a, a lab where you have to be nude. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he said, yeah, you have to be nude. And then we designed a lab for three people sitting nude in a carpet and playing out three parts of a character. Uh, the vamp or the macho, the bad consciousness, and uh, the romantic lover. And they just got caught or avoided to get caught by going into that uh, closet um, of, ha uh, of uh, helping someone uh, have adultery to his or her significant other. So, and you play this lap for 15 minutes, nude in a carpet, uh, in, a, in a closet, not carpet, <laughs> nude in a closet. Uh, actually, it's not really characters, but it's still a lap in a way. Uh, actually, that's not at your lab, but you could do something similar in an educational way. And this works in 15 minutes. And it works that well that some of the people who played it, played it over and over and over again. Like, I want to be another part. Oh, what is if we are not of the same gender in there? What if we are, uh, if there's a gay couple out of there and he just tried to, with the best girlfriend and blah, 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 stuff like that. So. I think this also would work with the Adulab, if you have the right topic or the right idea. My question also has to do with that uh, time issue, uh, and I was thinking about, uh, is there any problem with, all, or with the preparation times it takes for be be before this uh, lab? Because I think about where if you like, uh, extend a lab to a, to a government body or anything, else and, and uh, then you say, oh, but your people also need to prepare like with clothes and reading texts and such before they can come to the event as far as Is that like... Uh, so that makes them think that no, we don't want to do it because we have to do something before we can do something more significant. Yeah, so the Living Dead and the XOH, those two labs I showed, have been played in the usual German time span of three days. We only played 24 hours in game, but we had some pre game and some after game. And we also started in the internet in before. Um, with emails on the Uxich and a forum on Facebook uh, for the characters. And they got the characters way in beforehand, like weeks before. And on The Living Dead, it's also had been that they were given the characters way before, but as it played in the 1980s, there had been no internet. So um, some people sent postcards or phones to each other and stuff like that. So. Um, we usually try to to start the game as early as possible. If you do something like Wonderland and you go there, then you really have to hand out the characters to the people, they have to read it, and then they have to start to play. And that's where this photo thing we do comes in. Because if you go to a person and say, okay, give me your person, give me the character's person, give me the character's inner self, then they get a feeling on how the character works just by doing a five second thing with photos. Okay, maybe I'm a hobby photographer, so I like to take photos, but <laughs> it works pretty well, actually. So you see the preparations as part of the game, usually, or? Yes, but no, it can be <laughs> this and that, whatever you want to do. So I prefer to have, so in German labs, usually, usually the lab starts at a significant point, and then at some point, it's, it goes over into off-game-ish. And I do it the other way around. I start with, it goes in-game-ish, even weeks before, like preparing your character, getting phone calls, or sending each other emails, or stuff like that. And then the game starts at a certain given point from the organizers. So, but that's a matter of taste, I think. I think it's better that way around. Anna. Thank you. Uh, have you had problems with uh, adult people being really stiff and not being able to, uh, people who haven't LARPed before, 
and educating them and how to get them into the role and actually dare to do something instead of being just like I can't really do this how can I take part in something like this children it's easy it's really easy to game and play no we haven't but I think there could be problems with that. So we had problems because these people that are signed up for LARPs, we do, are pretty much aware of what they are signing up for. What, but we had one very interesting um, thing that we, we found out. Usually when you have LARPers who had LARP for years and years and years, you think they will manage with the new environment pretty well. And if you have someone who never LARPed but thought this might be a good idea to come to your strange at you lab for his or her first lab then you think oh my god will this go well and actually our experience is people that never lapped before usually play a lot better than people that lap for years and years and years because they are so much into it oh it's something new i want to do it ah. so my experience maybe it's different on other people yes Please give give us an anecdote. Uh, yeah, I uh, I did a course in uh, in evaluation methods in uh, at the Technical University of Denmark, which uh, which was basically um, um, a course on how to evaluate infrastructure projects. And we had this uh, one exercise where we uh, pretty uh, basically LARPed um, different uh, different stakeholders in a project and. Um, well, the problem was that uh, it wasn't really well prepared and uh, and the characters weren't very well defined, so it didn't go very well. Everybody just went into the sort of expert mode where we know this and this project is better because uh, the numbers say so instead of trying to have trying to immerse yourself in having some kind of uh, having some kind of character and a, and a specific vantage point uh, which you're uh, observing the, uh, the issue from so that you're basically you, you know the, the proverb of, of uh, everybody seeing a different part of the elephant and, uh, and this was this exercise tried to teach, uh, te teach just that and unfortunately it pretty much failed because uh, uh, the people who organized that exercise didn't take into account that it's not it might not be uh, it might not come naturally for, uh, from people to uh, to immerse themselves into uh, into a role that they haven't been in before so sometimes it might be a bit difficult and usually you have to prepare and you have to be pretty specific about about um, what uh, what amount of, of immersion uh, we're looking after yeah, I I think that's like everything you do in life. It suits to some people, and to some people it doesn't suit. You have to take care on uh, what people will participate and what I want to do. So, very important thing. Thanks. Yeah, please. Um, about uh, how to define or how you would define the word edularp. Uh, um, would you think that it would be blasphemy to call such a game edularp that the game itself wasn't meant to teach anything specific but the setting and studying for the setting uh, would make the educational part for example picking some certain uh, time of history and and to play in that time you'd have to uh, learn of the habits and of the political situation and and clothing and the game itself would just be simply and plainly a LARP set in that setting where in the LARP nothing specific wouldn't jump up but the educational part would come from the preparing would you <coughs> think that it would be right to call that an edu LARP? Um. I think I wouldn't call it the Edulab, but if you want to call it the Edulab, I'm perfectly okay with that. <laughs> so, because I think you will learn something out of every lab. That's a good thing about lab. You you do it and you learn something, either about society, about group techniques, or maybe just about yourself. So I do lab like 15 years now or six, 16 years, and I learned a lot about myself in lab. So 
every LARP is at your LARP. <laughs> but um, I hate to categorize things because I, I think even if you say the word LARP, uh, that's such a wild field. Yeah, in, in Germany, chess is considered to be sports. So um, I think LARP is like sports. Some people just shove around some wooden things on a squared black and white board and other people have to go to the highest mountain of the earth without an oxygen mask and both do sports same to LARP for me so and if people say no that's not LARP because of fuck you <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> and if you want to call it edulap call it edulap <laughs> someone else So are we done? No. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you say to those people who say that you don't need LARP for teaching? Why do you play in school? That's stupid. Can't you just teach them, give them a lecture and that's it? It's more fun, but should it be fun? I, I usually don't try to... If people are negative, I usually don't try to to tell them what my point of view is. I usually talk to the positive people. Okay, so you don't tell them anything? No, I, I talk to them, of course, but I don't give that much effort in it. And what I usually do is I... When I work with kids, I like that these kids are interested in something, that they are curious. So if you have a kid that is curious, you can work with that kid because you can make up any setting that makes it curious. I do the same with adults usually. So for example, when I first in my, my workplace wanted to do LARP with kids, my boss and all the other colleagues didn't know what LARP was. So the first thing I went in was I said, Every kid has a right on a sword. Then I had a tension. <laughs> and then I tried to explain. <laughs> of course, that's quite radical, yeah? But, um, yeah, I, I don't talk that much to negative people. I'm, I try to make them curious. If they start to get interested, I talk a lot. But if people say, like, need I don't like, then let them go. They can play football with the kids. also good. Yeah. May I uh, give a suggestion what to say on that situation? Yeah, yeah please, please. I think uh, I would go and tell them uh, what's different in a lecture and what's different in a LARP. What is the dif difference in, in the learning? First of all, uh, in LARP you have an extra motivation on doing it. And that's like, instead of being tired and going to a lecture, it's like, ah, I don't give a shit what you're talking about. And, and you're not actually listening. You're there because you're, you need to be there. And if you're not, you're in trouble. If you go to a LARP, that can actually be also with kids the same at some point. Or, you know, young adults or something like that. But uh, still, you can make, the, make it more motivating. And so they actually want to be there. The next, I would say that um, in it's a pretty much the same thing in advertisement. If you get a sponsor in a, in a LARP, you would say, I don't have many participants, but it's a, a deep contact. So this, I would say, is a deep way of learning. Learning with emotions and realizing the stuff by yourself instead of somebody just telling you, this is a feast. Hauki on kala, hauki on kala, hauki on kala, instead of you know, going and, and realizing... Whatever that means. <laughs> cod is a fish. Cod is a fish. Cod is a fish. Yeah. Instead of realizing, okay, these are fishes. I have to add something on that list. Uh, LARP is participatory. So, for example, this lecture isn't. Uh, you are sitting there and you participate with asking me questions, but still we have uh, certain uh, roles. I have the role to make myself a uh, fool here, and you have the role to sit there. And even if I would go, would go up, like giving you the microphone, say, let me sit there and you go down there, I would decide that. You would never do the same to me, because I'm the one who is doing the stuff here. So that's not really participatory, because we are not on an equal level, what's obviously. I 
I'm down here, but <laughs> on LARP, on LARP, this is you are on a on an equal level, not not in every in every manner, of course, but that's never in life. But you 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 have uh, it's really participatory because everyone can do something in that LARP, whatever he or she wants or thinks it's right or wrong or whatever, and it will be part of the game. It will be done. Yeah. <laughs> A follow-up question. Uh, you were talking. We were talking about Öster, what the Österskov. I, I never remember that name. Uh, but <laughs> how they teach uh, in one setting of being different parts of a scenario. Uh, is it important to replay the scenario so that the uh, uh, children or whoever is playing is playing on a different field? So everybody gets to count. Uh, how high walls we can make from this amount of mountain rock that we have, or do they actually learn by that some part of the group has done that? Actually, I haven't been that deep into this. Um, I can't answer you the question, but you, I think you have people on Facebook that are actually on 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 Östersgof, so just ask, ask them. I've been there. Actually, I'm not a teacher, I'm an educator. I had a total different point of view on these kids. For example, for me, it was pretty more interesting that I haven't seen a fight in seven days. I've been seven days there, and there had been kids seven days, 100 kids, uh, like 90 male and uh, six or seven female, and three haven't been there, something like that. So, and there has been no fight, but in labs. So that was quite interesting for me. If you have people in that age, in that small room, that long time, and they they have no fight, there might be some other way to get rid of all these stuff. That was, for example, interesting for me. And yeah, of course, I had to watch a bit how they teach, but I'm an educator, I'm not a teacher. Uh, as an idea, the math is very concrete, but uh, for example, moral themes. If you're teaching about uh, how to sell fear, do you act, do you, if you if you if your LARP is on a theme that how to sell fear, what is the moral morality of the company and and what is fear and everything like that? Do they actually have have to be on the for example, if there are different sides, some of them want to sell the fear and some of them realize that they are selling the fear. Does it go through the whole group or do they have to play it again on a different side to understand it? So uh, you, are you pointing to Estoscope or to that... Uh, uh, Your lab. The ARG. It's not mine, but I have participated in that. Um, we didn't play it again and again and again with the same people. It was played by different people, but... Um, as the players group was pretty small in most cases, but some, um, it became cl quite clear to all the players. Uh, but they also played this or a similar game with uh, like 200 kids from a school. That was a whole uh, fraction of the school that they had there. And then they had uh, one or two days afterwards in the school where they... Uh, reflected all the stuff with the kids so but that's a different age and i think you have to do it in a different way for the adults it's more like push them in there you can reflect afterwards but i i think it's not good to to really push them in a in a specific way of thinking they should think their own things pushing is of course not very good but how do you then get kids who are perhaps a little more shy or don't, or don't actually or think that oh lord is it's un, it's uncool this thing and they try, they they die. they just don't want to they don't want to do it or, but they are in a group that is like the teacher has has said that now we are going to do this and and they don't do it so because i have uh, experienced that then it's very difficult to to like uh, to to laugh at all when some people just don't then it then more people shut down yeah. usually we, we I would t are we talking about kids or adults kids mostly yeah. i think so i actually i have no experience with uh, laughing with kids in um like an afternoon or something like that the kids i do laugh with are kids i know from my work and we usually we go to the one of the german big labs drachenfest it's about 
five to six thousand participants and it's for a whole week and we gonna live there with the kids and they will have their own buffer weapons own costumes and we have, will be there for seven days of course you can't do that with a group that do not know each other and we start to prepare this group usually half a year before and we meet every week in the vacation or if the in the holidays school holidays we week we meet twice a week for a full day in the school once a week for a half day and then uh, prepare the the stuff uh, get all the costumes done the buffer weapons done or practice in the woods how to 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 walk through woods on the first place they just fall over everything and after half a year you have everyone in and those who won't be in after half a year they will be they will go off far far before that half year know what i mean so yeah i understand i have no idea of how it works on the afternoon yeah uh we we made some we made some things like that for a bookshop uh for uh there had been a bookshop and for the release of aragon on for harry potter we made an afternoon lab for kids but that also had been the highly interested kids so i can't tell you how it works with kids that are not so highly interested no experience sorry so then are we done then thank you for listening um, if you have questions, uh, just uh, ask me somewhere with a beer. Oh, no, I, I'm, I'm not mentioned the alcohol. <laughs> with a Coke? <laughs> Coke <laughs> or something. Uh, find me at the bar or find me somewhere here around. I maybe do some photos. You can talk to me either way. It's not a problem. If you are interested in emailing me, just come here. I give you a business card or you can give me your business card or whatever you want. And I'm glad to hear if you want to talk to me about your experience or about your questions. And we can specify that later on, really. Uh, yeah, thank you for listening.